we basically drained our savings to cover the cost of his leg amputation. I'll never forget feeling so stressed and so overwhelmed because I thought, how how are we going to pay for this? How are we going to pay for, you know, our beloved dog who had this accident? It was completely unexpected. And so we just felt very lost and very helpless in that moment. You're listening to Financial Grown Up with me, certified financial planner, Bobby Rebel, author of How to Be a Financial Grown Up. And you know what? Being a grown up is really hard, especially when it comes to money. But it's okay. We're going to get there together. I'm going to bring you one money story from a financial grown up, one lesson, and then my take on how you can make it your own. We got this. Hey, friends. Hope everyone is hanging in there because this coronavirus pandemic seems to be going on and on and on. And for many people, emergency funds are being stretched in ways never imagined. For this week's Financial Grown Up, Inspired Budgets, Allison Baggerly, the importance of an emergency fund hit home seven years ago when her family's dog, Joey, was injured and then treatment took a bad turn. I was so glad to be able to get Allison on this podcast specifically because her specialty is helping stressed out and overworked people take control of their finances, something we all need to do right now. Allison also co-hosts the This Is Awkward podcast with my friend Chris Browning, who has been a guest on this podcast. You may know him as the host of the Popcorn Finance podcast, where he dispenses nuggets of financial wisdom in about the time it takes to make a bag of popcorn. After you listen to this episode, definitely go check out Chris Browning's episode. You can find that episode and frankly, all previous episodes by going to my website, bobbyrebell.com and using the search bar. Just put in his name. You can also find lots of other information on pretty much any financial topic by searching the website where we have all of it indexed for you to find the episode that has exactly the information you need. On that note, here is great information from Inspired Budgets, Allison Baggerly. Allison Baggerly, you are a financial grown-up. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have you. You know, I actually almost pulled an all-nighter because I'm so addicted to your podcast, This Is Awkward, with our friend Chris Browning from Popcorn Finance. And uh, you also, by the way, are behind the hugely popular Inspired Budget. You have Oh my gosh. How many Instagram followers? Like a hundred thousand or more or something like that? 103,000 is where I stand right now. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, I'm going to hold you after school for some Instagram tips, but welcome to the podcast. Tell us quickly about those projects. So This Is Awkward is a podcast I have with Chris, and we basically talk about awkward money situations and how to navigate them with others. It's really fun. And then Inspire Budget is where I work with women. I teach women how to budget, pay off debt, and save money so that way they can live their best life. Well, they are both great, great resources for our listeners. You also brought with you a money story. It's a tough one, but tell us your money story, Allison. Well, when my husband and I were working to pay off debt, we had two teacher salaries. We're living on two teacher salaries, working to pay off debt. And we have our dog, Joey. He's still here with us today. He's old, but he is well. And we were visiting family. We left to go see some friends and our dog thought we were leaving him for good. I don't know if he thought maybe we didn't love him anymore. I don't know what happened, but he jumped a chain link fence, ripped out a toenail. The emergency vet we took him to did not give him a strong enough prescription for his size. And he also wrapped his leg too tight. So by the time we took off the wrap, he had actually developed gangrene in his leg. And so we were two poor teachers. We basically drained our savings to cover the cost of his leg amputation. I'll never forget feeling so stressed and so overwhelmed because I thought, how how are we going to pay for this? How are we going to pay for, you know, our beloved dog who had this accident? It was completely unexpected. And so we just felt very lost and very helpless in that moment. So what happened? First of all, did you go back to the vet and have certainly at the very least 
I, I mean, how could they have charged you for this, given that it was, it sounds like there was some fault on their part. So we never were able to prove fault on their part. I was just so emotionally worked up and focused on our dog that I was just like, you know what? I don't even care. I don't, you know, people were like, you need to get revenge. You need to, you need to get your money back. And so we ended up getting some of the money back. Actually, my father-in-law contacted his homeowner's insurance and they covered, somehow they covered the cost of that vet visit, but we had to be out of pocket for the amputation. We actually took him to two different vets to get him looked at. And then our vet was the one who did the amputation. And he said he had never seen a case so bad. It was rapidly like you could see it going up his leg over time. And so it was a matter of, we knew we had to pay for it. Thankfully, we didn't have to go into debt or put it on a credit card for it, but it completely drained our savings, which made me feel very insecure as a person in terms of my money. Yeah, because that was by definition your backstop. And now what happens if something else happens? And it teaches us that as much as emergency funds are important, somehow they're never enough, especially we see what's going on with coronavirus. We've talked about mm -hmm. three to six months emergency funds as being sort of the gold standard. And here we are six months past. So this is a reminder that it's not only coronavirus that can really devastate an emergency fund. There's so many things that happen. And of course, you know, with medical stuff, with humans and with furry friends, <laughs> you can't always get a second opinion in a, in an emergency. I mean, you were stuck with the medical help you could get at mm -hmm. that moment. And you couldn't really go in and be negotiating the bill. You needed medical help. It was an emergency. It was an emergency. We needed it right then or else it would spread to his body and he would have died. It just goes to show you that so often people say, you know, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 is enough while you're paying off debt. And that taught me that it wasn't. It wasn't enough. I was not prepared to cover those types of things. And those things are going to happen whether or not you like it. Yeah. And I have to ask you, so I, I'm guessing you did not have pet insurance at the time. No, we didn't have pet insurance and we don't have pet insurance now. We just paid for it out of our savings. It completely drained it. We ended up actually canceling. My husband had a work trip that he was going to be going on. We ended up canceling that work trip. He was going to have to pay for things like hotel and food so that we could try to increase our savings or put some of that money back in our savings account for the future and build it back up. Yeah, those are tough choices. What is the lesson for our listeners from the story when you look back on it? How many years ago was it? It was about seven years ago. He's actually lived longer with three legs than he has with four. <laughs> so it was about seven years ago. And I would say my lesson is that you can never have too much money in savings and that if you're working to pay off debt, it's okay to pause that goal to increase your savings, even though it's not fun, even though you might not feel like you're making progress, it will be worth it because there will come a time when you are thankful that you have that money set aside, even if it feels like it's just sitting there doing nothing. How do you know how much? Where is the balance though? A lot of people are always confused about that. What's your opinion? My opinion is three to six months of your emergency expenses Usually, if you're going to do something like lose a job, hopefully you'll be able to get a new one within that time. So I teach people to actually calculate how much they would need for an emergency budget, meaning you do things like cancel Hulu, cancel Apple Music. Those types of things can go in an emergency situation. So it's going to vary per person, but I definitely don't think that even just $1,000 or $2,000 is enough because it can't, it doesn't cover much anymore. Such good point. But you also point out well that even like for now in coronavirus times, it's been six months, but yet we are spending less because we're home. So when you're in an emergency situation, you will probably not have the same financial needs as you would have. So you have to make those adjustments. You also brought with you a everyday money tip. Tell us. Yes. So my everyday money tip is one that I've actually started doing in the coronavirus pandemic. I realized that 
I was spending so much money online. I don't know if I was maybe processing everything and and used and turning to my emotions. I was stressed and I was stress shopping online, but I realized I was spending so much money on Amazon. It was ridiculous. And so I created basically a tracker to track three money goals. I said, you know what? I need to get back on track with my goals of not spending so much money online and doing different things that help me financially. And so I created this tracker and I literally will color in a box every single day that I complete one of my goals. And they're so simple. One of them is to cook dinner at home. One of them is no online shopping. And the other one is exercise. Even though that might not be a money goal, it does help you out financially in years to come. I track those things so that I can build those better habits and just continue to take one step closer every single day to the money goals that I want to achieve. How do you manage it if a day you don't do one of the goals? How do you get back on track? I just say, okay, you know what? I didn't do it today. That's okay. This is one day. Tomorrow is different. So there are days when I don't cook dinner at home whenever I knew I was planning on doing that. And instead of beating myself up for it, instead of saying like, oh, I failed, I'll just go ahead and start over in the next month or I'll just wait. I'll just keep failing for the next couple of days. Instead of assigning that to my identity, I just say, okay, this happened. Thankfully, there's still however many days left in the month where I can turn this around and make progress. And so it's fun for me to actually visually see myself reaching three small goals, which those three small goals, they support my bigger money goals. I know if I do these three small things every day that they can actually make a difference in my big goals that I have set. Great advice. Thank you so much. Tell us more about where people can follow you and learn more about Inspired Budget. And this is awkward. Wherever you're listening to podcasts, however you're listening to this, you can go ahead and search for This Is Awkward. We would love to have you listen. It is a very fun podcast. And then you can follow me on Instagram at Inspired Budget or go to inspirebudget.com to get more tips and tricks about budgeting, paying off debt and saving money. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Here we go, my friends. Financial grown-up tip number one. So many people have been adopting pets during COVID-19, which is amazing, but please make sure you understand the financial commitment before you do so. Financial grown-up tip number two. If you aren't ready for the financial and lifestyle commitment, or you're just not sure, consider fostering dogs in need while they are waiting for a permanent home. You can get some welcome company and love during the pandemic and really help a pet in need. And by the way, I absolutely loved Allison's everyday money tip. It gets really granular about realistic short-term goals. Sometimes we just need to take it day by day to get to the month by month, the year by year, and so on. If you want more everyday money tips, head over to my website, bobbyrebell.com, where I have put together a free list of them from some of our all-star financial grownups, including Gene Chatsky, Kevin O'Leary, David Bach, Barbara Corcoran, Farnoosh Tarabi, and more. And please DM me on Instagram at bobbyrebell1 with some of your everyday money tips. Make sure to check out Allison's podcast with Chris Browning, This Is Awkward, and of course, inspiredbudget.com. Big thanks to Allison Baggerly for helping us all be financial grownups. Financial Grown Up with Bobby Rebel is edited and produced by Steve Stewart and is a BRK Media production.